Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what is interphase? As I said, this is that phase during which the cell prepares itself so that it can divide later. So this interphase is, as already discussed, divided into three parts that is G1, S and G2. So these three stages together comprise the interphase stage. Now in this stage we have cells like this. This is one cell and this is another cell. So you have separate cells, individual cells which uh, get matured, prepares itself for the cell division. Now we will discuss about this phase in detail. So this is also known as the resting phase. Resting phase in the sense that the cell is not dividing. So it is taking rest so that when the dividing stage comes, it can be active to divide. So it is divided into three phases. G1 that is gap 1 or first gap phase. S that is synthesis phase and G2 that is gap 2 or second gap phase. So let us talk about G1 that is first gap phase. So as it says gap, that means it is a break. Like when you work really hard, you need a break in between. So that means this is also a break phase or a gap phase. So this phase, in this phase, the cell is metabolically active. When I say metabolically active, what do I mean? I mean to say that the cell is active to carry out metabolism. Metabolism are all the... Uh, life processes taking place inside our body. We have talked about metabolism in our previous lesson, right? All the different type of chemical reactions taking place inside our body for respiration, digestion, excretion, they all fall under metabolic reaction and all these things together which help in sustaining life is known as metabolism. So in this stage, the cell is metabolically active. So all the processes are taking place inside the cell and the cell continues to grow. So this phase occurs prior to duplication of DNA. Now the cell has to grow at least to some extent so that it can uh, duplicate its DNA or it can copy its DNA. So this is how it looks like. Let us suppose if this is the cell, we have a nuclear membrane because now we are talking about eukaryotic cell. So here this dotted structure which you say, see that is nothing but a nuclear membrane. This structure which you see at the center that is nothing but nucleolus. And these thread like structures which you see they are nothing but the chromatin threads. And these chromatin threads will later condense to form the chromosomes. We, we are all familiar with these terms by now. If not, please refer the lesson on cell so that you get to know about each part of the cell in detail. So now, right now the cell is metabolically active and it is growing. So the cell grows and reaches maturity. Now as soon as uh, this phase comes, this is the first step as well as if you see, it, it comes after the last step of the cell cycle. What is the last step of the cell cycle? That is cytokinesis. That is the cytoplasm divides and daughter cells are formed. Now the daughter cells are nothing but the newly formed cells. Now the newly formed cells immediately cannot divide again. They need to grow. They need to mature. So this is the stage where they grow and mature. In order to grow or mature what has to happen, so many metabolic activities need to take place. So these metabolic activities happens here. Now during this phase the cell also increases in mass in preparation for cell division because it is a simple logic. Uh, suppose if you if a small boy wants to fight with a big boy he needs to have a lot of energy. So in order to get that energy what he tries to do he tries to eat well drink well so that he you know he gains some weight he has some energy to fight. Similarly here the cell needs to increase its mass to prepare itself for the cell division. So this is G1 phase or the first gap phase. So here the cell does nothing, no cell division, nothing. It is just that all metabolic reactions will take place inside the cell and the cell will gradually become mature so that all the cell organelles are there in the cell and the cell can go ahead.
Now the next phase that is the S phase which is also known as synthesis phase. Synthesis means to manufacture something, to prepare something. Now this is a very important phase because it is in this phase that DNA synthesis takes place and you know how important DNA is. DNA is nothing but the genetic material. Now if we want cell to divide then the cell should have multiple copies of DNA so that each of them can be distributed to each daughter cell. Very true, correct? So that the same thing that copying of DNA or duplication of DNA takes place in the synthesis cells, synthesis phase. So this is how the cell looks like again as I mentioned before. So here DNA replication takes place. So where is DNA in this cell? Can you tell me? You all know that. Okay, so inside the nucleus you have these thread-like structures. So these are nothing but the chromatin threads. And the chromatin threads will later become chromosomes and DNA is present inside the chromosome. So uh, the structure of the chromosome, if you have forgotten, it looks somewhat like this and you have genes arranged like this. Correct? So this gene has nothing but DNA. So DNA is present here. So DNA replication takes place. So, the, so here you see the replicated DNA is shown by blue colored thread like structures. Now, so the, D, the process of DNA copying begins here. Now, if in most of the cells there is a narrow window of time during which DNA synthesis occurs. So this step is not a very or is not of very long duration it is only for a short time and in that short time the dna quickly gets replicated so it is not only the dna replication which is important it is also important that some other important parts which participate in cell division should also get replicated and one such part is the centrioles Centrioles, small structures which are present within the centrosome. So centrioles occur in pairs. So these centrioles also duplicate. So you, you get one more pair of centrioles. Why? Because see, when you want the cell to divide into two, if this cell gets divided into two, you need to give uh, the genetic material to both of them. You need to give the centrioles to both of them. Now, why centrioles get duplicated is also because centrioles play a very important role in the process of mitosis and meiosis. So that is why also they need to be uh, duplicated. We will see what role it plays there. So the centrioles also get duplicated. Now, it is now it is seen that if a cell is not uh, large enough or if it is not healthy enough in that case the cell cycle stops here to prevent further injury because let us suppose if the DNA is not getting replicated properly then that is a problem because the correct DNA exact copy of the DNA should be formed now if they, the cell is not healthy enough to do that replication or if the environmental conditions are not good enough to, uh, to make that replication possible in that case the cell cycle will stop at the S phase it will not proceed to the next phase that is it will not proceed to the G2 phase because if the DNA replication is not proper even if you forcefully make it move to G2 phase I mean it is of it is not going to be of any use because you don't have all the things that are needed for the cell to split into two halves so it is very very important that DNA duplication happens in a very correct way now in order to check whether the G DNA duplication happened in the right way or not, we have the next phase that is called the G2 phase or the second gap phase. Here what happens is the DNA is checked by enzymes for mistakes and then repaired. Now, as I said, since DNA is getting copied, now it often happens that suppose you miss your school for one day. So what do you do? You miss the notes which your teacher gave. So what do you do? You take your friend's notebook and then you start copying whatever was whatever notes was given by your teacher. Now there is a possibility that during copying the notes you might make some mistakes in copying. Now if you make some mistakes in copying that is going to harm you, that is going to affect you because you are copying it in the wrong way. So now 
the same thing might happen here when the DNA is getting copied there might be some mistakes in the process of copying so somebody needs to check if the copying has been done correctly because in this case the when when the cell division actually takes place one daughter cell will carry one DNA so the daughter cell will get the copied DNA might not function in the right way if that copied DNA is not exactly the same as the original DNA. That is why it is very important to test if the DNA has been copied correctly. So therefore this step has to come after synthesis phase because in the synthesis phase the DNA is copied. So only after that you can check if it is copied correctly or not. So this is how the DNA gets copied. Let us suppose if this is your original DNA and this is the copied DNA. So you have to make sure that the sequence of the nucleotides here is exactly the same. For example, I'll give you a small example. Let us suppose this is your original DNA and this is the copied DNA. So in the original DNA, if you see, it, both of them looks almost the same but not exactly the same. If you see here, this portion has this but here you do not have this. So these kind of small changes might be there and that is what needs to be repaired in this phase. So that is the purpose of this phase. Now when you talk about the gap phases, whether it is G1 or G2, these phases are less dramatic when compared to the synthesis phase or the mitotic phase which we will talk later. Now of course it is uh, very obvious that the mitotic phase is going to be very dramatic because the actual process of cell division will take place there. So obviously that is going to be very dramatic. A lot of drama will happen, a lot of new cells will be formed. Similarly in the synthesis phase also if you see DNA copying take place which is a very important step. Actual replication is happening that is again also a dramatic phase but if you see g1 nothing as such happens it is just the normal metabolic activities which keep on happening inside the cell similarly if you look at g2 again here nothing special happens it is just that the copied dna is just checked so nothing new is forming or nothing new is happening so these two phases that and that is why they are known as gap phases because they are kind of break or they are kind of resting phase. However, this is a very important phase because uh, this series of checks need to be performed to see if the cell is actually ready for the cell division. So in this phase, protein synthesis also takes place because uh, proteins are something, as you all know, the importance of proteins by now after we have studied biomolecules. So proteins are needed for every activity that happens in a cell. So when you are going to start an, something like cell division, you should have enough protein synthesized inside. So that preparation for, for, for protein synthesis also takes place in uh, this G2 phase. Now when you compare all these three phases of the interphase, it is seen that in most of the cells G1 that is the first gap phase is the longest time of the cell cycle. So G1 is the uh, phase in which the cell spend most of its time of its entire lifetime. That is the time which is spent in undergoing the metabolic activity, growing and getting matured. So that is the phase when the cell spends most of its time. So I hope the concept of interphase is clear. So the cell is now getting prepared. So first what it will do, it will just grow and mature, uh, just undergo all the metabolic activities. That is G1. Next is synthesis, where which is very, very important, where it will copy or replicate its, duplicate its DNA so that it can give one copy to each daughter cell. And the third phase is G2 where the DNA is checked so that it has been correctly copied or not. And also protein synthesis will take place so, the cell, so that the cell is all set for uh, the cell division to take place. So now if you, uh, if you want to quickly review how protein synthesis used to take place, you can just have a look at this. This was the DNA which contained, which stored the genetic information. So this DNA was carried by mRNA, that is the messenger RNA, where transcription took place. And this messenger RNA then took it out of the nucleus and uh, took it to the ribosome where the gene is, where the protein synthesis and how proteins were synthesized, the sequence of the nucleotides actually helped to build the amino acids and those amino acids together formed the proteins. So that is how protein synthesis used to take place. So in this phase also the cell growth continues, the cell still continues to grow. So that process happens at its own, 
at its own pace. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.